America today. Out of our vast human potential, operating engineers are turning the fires of our new technology to building a new prosperity for our nation. Through our organized capacity to work, we are forging new tools to ensure a free society. We come from stronger origins, deeper roots. We have not lost the spirit that made America great. We are restoring liberty, and with it, our own ingenuity and creativity. We are building better lives for our families and our communities. The promise of this great land can only be assured by the men and women of a free labor movement who care enough to keep it free. The International Union of Operating Engineers. We are still a people with a dream. The IUOE works hard to protect all union workers. Our efforts in the area of legislation to rectify unjust laws and to protect our workers and their families from the practices of double breasting represents a crusade that every member of organized labor has got to be a part of. Our very survival is at stake. We want to lead the way. We want to convince our own brothers and sisters within this labor movement and the people of this nation that we can change attitudes and we can build a better union and a better nation. This is where the decisions of the legislators and the critical issues that affect the lives of every member of organized labor and their families will be decided. But what happens here will be directly affected by what you do out there, across the nation, in your local union. The International Union of Operating Engineers and all the construction trades are at the forefront of the most critical issues facing the men and women of organized labor today. Double breasting. To bring you knowledge of the facts, to invite you to be part of the solution, this program was created. Double breasting is nothing more than a double cross on a contract that has been voluntarily negotiated. We're losing thousands of jobs and also we're losing our full legal right to be represented by local unions. We in the building trades but the whole labor movement are fighting for survival. But this is going to affect more than just our union. This is going to hit our families. It's going to hit our communities. This issue is really important for our kids, for our families. Double breasting, in my opinion, is uh is a vicious scheme on the part of unscrupulous construction contractors to destroy labor unions. The practice of double breasting is a modern day tactic by contractors to ignore their pre-hire agreements with organized labor by setting up non-union companies, robbing union workers of their jobs, and nullifying the protection of collective bargaining for workers. Pre-hire agreements are permitted by the law because of the nature of the construction industry. The jobs are of short duration and there's great turnover of various craftsmen on the job. It is not a stable situation as you would find in a factory or a store where people have steady employment. And therefore, we have uh, this law that permits us to negotiate an agreement prior to the workmen actually being on the job site. Now, it doesn't make sense for a union to bargain with someone for 50 years and to believe that they still have a contract with the employer. And then for him, without any warning or any word whatsoever, just saying, well, I've, I've added one or two additional board members to this corporation, and therefore I have a right to have a double breast. We believe that this absolutely nullifies the rights of construction workers to enjoy the rights of collective bargaining. The fruits of collective bargaining, which we were guaranteed as far back as 1935 in the Wagner Act. Well, I think the solution uh, to double breasting is the, uh, the enactment of H.R. 281, a House bill which I introduced, and at this point we have almost 100 co-sponsors very simple bill is it just says that it will be outlawed that it, that a, a contractor who signs a, a an agreement with a labor union under no conditions will be able to weasel out of that uh, agreement once a legislative bill is introduced in the halls of congress the lobbyist job then becomes important because he has to generate support for that bill 
He has to show to the congressman and his committee why the need is there. The effect the bill will have not only on the people that you're representing, but also on the nation. There is no way that I can contact 30 or 40 congressmen when one of our bills is before a full committee. There is a joint effort by all of labor. We join together the Building Trades Department, the Industrial Union Department, the Public Employees Department, the Professional Employees Department, all joining together to see that one piece of legislation that affects our members is able to reach the floor of Congress for a vote. Effort to stop double-breasting is a comprehensive approach that has unified and brought forward support not only of the building trades, but of every branch of the Federation of Organized Labor of the AFL-CIO. Labor unions can and should change uh, the laws with respect to double-breasting. Certainly we have been the uh, leaders in this country in, in uh, changing many wrongs that have existed, such as uh, fighting for the civil rights movement. Uh, in negotiated uh, pension plans, which means that many people in this country today could not subsist on Social Security alone. If you do away with union negotiated pensions, then the government has to pick up the slack. So I think that we can change double-breasting, and I think we as a, as a, a champion of the working men and women of this country have an obligation to try to change this law. Congress is where the decision will be made, but the local union hall is where the voices of working men and women of this nation will come together to be heard, and where the strength of organized labor lies. Double-breasting ability of our contractors to work both sides of the fence, they can work union and work non-union. We got to fight this thing, and one of the ways we can do that is we've got to get a hold of our congressmen and our senators and make them aware that this is very important to us. This piece of legislation means the survival of unionism in the construction industry. This brochure, The Battle to Save Your Jobs, has all the information in it that you need to make yourself intelligent to discuss this issue. We also have these cards that we want you to sign tonight. Uh, with this, it's just a pledge by you when you sign this card that, that you're going to commit yourself to contacting your senator <laughs> your congressman on this H.R. 281. Also, it makes you a part of that political action team that's out there uh, contacting other senators and congressmen on H.R. 281. Like I said a minute ago, we know what's going on. We see it. We deal with it. We've got to let everybody else know. We've got to write the letters. We've got to sign the cards. We've got to get word to the congressman. They're the ones that can help us. Thank you. This is where the action is, where your attendance and participation are critical. Well, you can count on me. There's great representation here in Washington, both uh, the contractors and labor here. And they can talk with us on the committee. And we can write legislation that's good. But they'll be the first ones to admit that they alone can't get things passed in Congress. There's nobody who can get a congressman or a congresswoman's vote like the people who live back in their district. And so I don't think that labor or anyone else should say, well, we've got people in Washington, we pay them, they can do the whole job. They can do the very important laying of the groundwork for the job, but without the participation of everyone. And that's why I think anyone who has an interest back in the country, I ask them constantly, or the local labor unions, not just always the national, do you know your member of Congress? More importantly, does your member of Congress, does he or she know you? And do they know your organization? And so I would hope that people around the country would visit their senators, their members of Congress. Tell them how many people are involved in that union. Tell them how important the construction is for that area. Tell them how many jobs it involves and how much money in the economy. And if Congressman's going to pay attention to me or somebody back home, he's going to pay attention to the person back home if he wants to be reelected. And uh, Congressman, we're looking for support. We need your support in this effort. Gentlemen, I, I want to thank you for taking the trouble to, to come by this morning and to bring me these and to bring me the information you have about Congressman Clay's bill. Uh, without this kind of meeting, without the kind of information you're bringing me, I wouldn't know of uh, your concerns and I wouldn't know about that, uh, the effect of the, of the practice that's going on now. 
I really appreciate you taking the trouble to come over. This is how the system works. I get information from you that otherwise I wouldn't have. I hear from my constituents, right. and I'm grateful to you. I appreciate it very much. Well, thank you again very much. For, As a for consequence of the contact made by the members of this local, Congressman Barnes became a co-sponsor of H.R. 281. Well, union members can do several things. First of all, they need to talk to their friends and neighbors. They need to talk to other segments of our society to make them aware that this injustice exists. And secondly, I believe that politicians being what they are, that they respond much more favorably to contact from our rank-and-file membership than they do, uh, for example, someone here in Washington, D.C., contacting them on the Hill. That politician needs to know that his constituents are hurting as a result of this unjust law. We are primarily a movement of idealism, in my opinion. And I think that is the picture that has been developed over the years by our union. Not by what we said, but what we've done. I believe that when we look at the kind of society that we have, the freedom that we have, some of it is often taken for granted. Without a free labor movement, there's no free society. By definition, if you don't have a free worker movement, you don't have a free society. Uh, too many people who are members of labor unions believe that, uh, that all of these fringe benefits that they now uh, uh, take advantage of uh, came about automatically. Uh, they don't know about the sacrifice that had to go into the making of management to uh, provide such benefits as health insurance, uh, retirement, paid holidays and vacation, 40-hour weeks. Uh, and they ought to know of that tremendous struggle that took place for almost a hundred years in this country uh, before they were able to get these rights. My husband's an operating engineer, and I, I really know what the construction business is all about. I think we've got to do anything we can. And if we've got to get out and write letters and talk to people and go to meetings, then that's what we've got to do. Uh, our families really depend upon us. It's, it's really important, and I don't think people understand how serious it is. Double breasting is a problem that is affecting all of us. It's something we have really got to win for our families. I can't begin to, to overemphasize the importance of rank and file members of labor unions lobbying their representatives in the Congress and writing letters to the President and to the Secretary of Labor and to the uh, chairman of the National Labor Relations Board. This is a fight to the finish. If this administration is successful in, in carrying out its proposals, the labor movement is dead in this country. The attacks are coming from all sides. And unless working people who have organized for the purpose of collective bargaining are willing to lobby and to fight and to vote, labor is in for some serious problems. The rights of workers to collectively bargain, the liberties and freedoms that made this country great, these are the values this union believes in. We're still a people with a dream, and that's why I want to ask you to join me in this fight, it's to stop the union busting tactics of double busting. It will be a tough fight, but it's one we've got to win. Now, it's up to you. We can make the dream a reality. Restoring liberty for our families, our union, and our nation.